You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. Hello. Um, have you ever heard of uh, Frankenstein? Like, Frankenstein is scary, right? Like, it's this big monster that, you know, I think he always has the bolts in his head. And he, uh, he's like a kind of like a zombie, except like none of that is actually accurate, right? It's like, did you know, like, the monster is not called Frankenstein, right, in the actual book. The man who created the monster is actually Dr. Frankenstein. The only way you would know that is if he were woke. What am I talking about? Well, I want to welcome you to the Griot Daily, the only podcast that'll tell you about how woke became a monster. Yeah, man, like, so I'm sure you see, like, all of these clips of white people, like, giving this crazy definition of woke. Wokeness is weakness. It's a cancer that's eating America. Woke is something very different. It's it's identity part. It's We see it all the time. It's always the most important thing. You know, we've talked about it on this podcast before, but uh, just so you'll know and you won't have to go back and look in the archives, um, woke was a word that was first used by black people in the 1920s. There was a blues singer called Huddy Leadbelly Leadbetter who first, like, is first recorded as using the term in a song about the Scottsboro Boys, some boys from Alabama who were convicted uh, of raping a white woman, falsely convicted. And uh, Huddy Leadbetter, Leadbelly Leadbetter, wrote a song about it. And at the end of the song, he said, you know, you got to stay away from Alabama if you're black. Y'all stay woke. I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through that, but stay woke. He died, though. And from then on, like, people were using it all of the time. Like, white people had, weren't using it. But, you know, in the 1940s, uh, coal miners strike by the Negro coal, mi- coal Miners Workers Union. William E. Kelly... Uh, who is this great author? You should look for his uh, books. Uh, he wrote an article in the New York Times in 1962 about Negro idiom, and one of the phrases that he defined was woke. And he just says means to be aware, right? And so we've known what it meant uh, for a long time, and we didn't necessarily keep it to ourselves. Like, we can tell he wrote that thing in the New York Times. Erica Badu wrote a whole song about Stay Woke. Um, so did Childish Gambino. You know white people love Donald Glover. So it wasn't like we was keeping it a secret, but white people don't necessarily pay attention to black people. They co-opted it and they started calling themselves woke if they, you know, paid attention or kind of were basically progressive or liberal which is never what woke meant. It just meant watch out for white people. But of course, white people can't watch out for white people. So they just created a whole new definition. And then other white people who didn't like the white people who had redefined the thing that black people created, they are the ones who turned it into a monster. They are the Frankensteins. Not just white people. It was conservatives. They are the Dr. Frankenstein in this analogy. But here is the thing, right? That ain't the first Frankenstein. That ain't the first monster that they created, right? This is a tactic. So to understand the history of this monster that these white conservative Frankensteins created, We'll have to go back, right? You're going to have to go back. Um, let's see. We can start with uh, the abolition movement was a thing, you know, even before America was a thing, right? Um, in notes on the state of Virginia, right, Thomas Jefferson, you know, the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence, he wrote about black people and he said, like, I'm kind of in favor of, uh, you know, Ending slavery, I think that slavery is wrong, but here's a problem. You know, when the Greeks had slaves and the Romans had slaves, and it was bad, but they enslaved people who looked like them. 
And so they didn't have to worry about it. Here's the important part. When they freed those people, they didn't have to worry about those people's blood mixing with things. That was a real word. That was one of the main arguments against abolition. And it extended even after slavery ended. The idea that black men were going to procreate or even have sex with white women was the monster that they created to justify slavery, to justify Jim Crow, to justify lynching. As a matter of fact, Ida B. Wells, who was this great uh, journalist, uh, one of the first investigative journalists, she advocated for an anti-lynching law. And people was like, but, you know, if we do that, you know, how are we going to stop the black men from raping the white women? So Ida B. Wells went around the country and she cataloged lynching. She did like a statistical uh, study of lynching. And she discovered most of the time a black dude is lynched. It's not for raping a white woman. Even the people who lie and say they do, that's not why they lynch. They just lynch black people for anything. Most lynchings didn't have anything to do with white women. And she cataloged this. She did a statistical analysis. You know, Southern lynchings and or other horrors was kind of one of the first looks at the lynching epidemic. And white people didn't care. They had already created their monster. Even during segregation, right? The fight to end segregation wasn't about integrating the schools, about busing. Nah, it was like black children are dirtier. They're going to give our children diseases. White black people, of course, are dumber. And so they're going to hold our kids back. They're going to have to teach them slow. The civil rights movement, they manufactured a whole monster about communism, right? Like most white people believed, and here's the uh, actual poll that shows it, most white people believed that communists were involved in the civil rights movement. They had created a whole monster, right? Um, the first anti-gay laws, right, were created because they said that the Russians were going to use the people's homosexuality to turn them into spies. And so they passed a bunch of uh, anti-gay laws, right? Police were authorized to like patrol areas where gay people hung out because it was, and it was called the lavender threat. Like you've probably heard of the, the red scare, but like Google the lavender scare, right? It was an anti-gay movement that was wholly manufactured out of this monster. Right. And, and even if you go to recent times, right, the reason that they do this, like they don't have an argument for segregation, for lynching. There's really no valid argument, except remember when my grandmama gave me one. She told me, like, when you try to understand racism, you have to understand one thing. Some people are just mean. Right. Like, there's no valid excuse. Some people are mean. So, like when Barack Obama was running for president, right? Like they wholly manufactured a monster that he wasn't from this country, that he was a socialist. And to prove it, they brought up this guy named Joe the Plumber, who was a small business owner who was hurt by all of these socialist policies, except it turned out that dude was not even a plumber. He didn't own a business, right? And then they said, they said Obamacare was going to create the death panel. And so they actually turned people against free health care. And to explain it, they said that like, they're going to have a whole panel of people who determine whether you could live or die. Now, it turned out once Obamacare was instituted, that monster disappeared and white people liked it. And then they had another monster that like uh, they needed to stop the Muslim terrorists from coming into our country. And so they created a Muslim ban against flying into the country. That's how Donald Trump probably won. He also kind of won by saying like MS-13 was coming over here in caravans and so he was going to build a wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. It was a monster. MS-13 was a monster. The Muslim terrorists were a monster. How do I know? Because shortly after that, the FBI said, well, the greatest domestic terror threat were white men. And then the people 
who were at an actual gang turned out to be groups like the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters who created a movement to overthrow democracy, right? These white supremacist groups, they were the real threat. But white people had manufactured this brown Muslim BLM monster who was coming to set fire to their cities. And it turned out the Washington Post reported that the the Black Matters Live protests after George Floyd were actually less violent than the entire civil rights movement. But again, they had that communism monster back in the 60s and the 50s. This one was about the thugs and the Antifa coming to destroy their cities. It wasn't true. It was a wholly manufactured monster. And the same with politically correct, the same with um, black identity extremists. All of that was monsters because, and here is the point, they don't have policies. They don't have reasons. They don't have something to say, we'll make equal schools. We'll make education better. We'll give you a better life. Conservatives don't have that. All they have are monsters. Walt, CRT, uh, BLM, Antifa, the leftist agenda, the gay agenda, the trans people coming to transform your children into indiscriminate people who burst into the wrong bathrooms and show their genitalia to toddlers. It's all a monster. None of it is real. And the thing that you should ask yourself when you hear about these monsters is, hey, why weren't black people doing that before? Why weren't we doing critical race theory in, edu in third grade since Derrick Bell came up with it? Why weren't trans people busting in bathrooms before? Why weren't the gays attacking us before? Why weren't all the black men sleep raping the black women before uh, slavery ended? Why didn't any of these things happen until white people manufactured? Because it is a monster and monsters aren't real. But the monster isn't CRT. It's not wokeness. Frankenstein isn't even the monster. Frankenstein is the man who creates the monster. And that's why you have to continue to tell your friends about this podcast. That's why you got to stay woke. That's why you got to download that real app. And that's why we always leave you with a black saying. And today's black saying is monsters ain't real, but white people are. We'll see you next time on The Grio Daily. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download The Grio app, subscribe to the show, and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcast at thegrio.com. I'm political scientist, author, and professor, Dr. Christina Greer, and I'm host of The Blackest Questions on the Griot's Black Podcast Network. This person invented ranch dressing around 1950. Who are they? I have no idea. This all began as an exclusive Black History Year trivia party at my home in Harlem with family and friends. And they got so popular, it seemed only right to share the fun with our Griot listeners. Each week, we invite a familiar face on the podcast to play. What was the name of the person who was an enslaved chief cook for George Washington and later ran away to freedom? In 1868, this university was the first in the country to open a medical school that welcomed medical students of all races, genders, and social classes. What university was it? No, th this is why I like doing stuff with you because I leave educated. I was not taught this in Alabama public schools. Question yeah. number three, you ready? Yes, yeah. I'm okay. just trying to redeem myself. How did we go from Kwanzaa to like these obscure- We got a sport, darling. We this got a is sport. like the New York Times crossword from a Monday to a Saturday right or wrong, because all we care about is the journey and having some fun while we do it. I'm excited and also a little nervous. Oh, listen, no need to be nervous. And as I tell all of my guests, 
This is an opportunity for us to educate ourselves because black history that. is American history. So we're just going to have some fun. Listen, some people get zero out of five. Some people get five out of five. It doesn't matter. We're just going to be on a little intellectual journey together. Latoya Cantrell? That's right. Mayor okay. Latoya Cantrell. Hercules Posey. Mm. Born in 1754, and he was a member of the Mount Vernon slave community, widely admired for his culinary skills. I'm going to guess Afropunk. Close. It's okay. Afro Nation. So I've never last heard year, of that. according to my research, it's Samuel Wilson, aka Falcon. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. I, I am I am disputing this. I'm very, 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 very 99.9999 sure that it is Representative John Lewis, who is also from the state of Alabama. That lets you know, Christina, we got some goodness come out of Alabama. There is something in the water in Alabama, and you are absolutely correct. The harder they come. Close. Oh, wait, uh, the harder they fall? That's right. I'm one of those people that, that just changes one word. <laughs> I mean, I know the show too well. I just don't know nothing today. It's I'm going to pour myself a little water while you tell me the answer. The answer is Seneca Village, which began in 1825 with the purchase of land by a trustee of the AME Zion Church. You know why games like this make me nervous? I don't know if I know enough black. Do I know enough? How black am I? Oh, my Lord, they, they gonna, we going to find out in public. So give us a follow, subscribe, and join us on The Blackest Questions.